let's learn how to create fully editable 3D text emblems as SVG exports in Illustrator in this simple tutorial. So in a new document, let's start by creating some point text. So grab your type tool and click on the canvas and type out a name, a word, anything you want your text emblem to be. This is fully editable, so it doesn't matter what it is for now, you can use any word you like. So I'll just go with a name, I'll just go with David for now. Let's press Command or Control A to highlight all text. And let's use the paragraph panel to center align this text. And now let's make this text bigger. So let's just bring this up, say to 72. And we're going to select a font that is thick and condensed. So something like Bebas, I think, works well for this. There's plenty of other fonts you could use, but try to use a condensed, narrow font if you can. So let's go with Bebas. Let's go with Bebas Bold and select with selection tool and let's hold alt or option and shift and just scale this up just so it's a little larger on the canvas. And if we come to our align panel here, align to artboard, we can center horizontally and vertically as well. So with this text selected, come to your appearance panel. And if you can't find it, go to window appearance, select the type in the appearance panel and come down to this little icon here to add a new fill color and then double click characters and inside the characters, let's turn off this fill here by selecting it and pressing the delete icon here and then come back to type. So now we've added a fill via the appearance panel and now we want to create a second fill. So select this fill and let's click and drag this down onto the plus icon at the bottom of the appearance panel to create a second fill. So on the top fill, set your opacity to 0%, press enter, and then select the bottom fill and come to FX and let's add an offset path. So go to path, offset path, and it doesn't matter what the offset path is for now, you can use the arrow keys to go up and down. So I'm just gonna go to 32 for now, make sure your preview set on. We can always change this at any time. So let's just press okay. So we've got the two fills, one has got zero opacity, the other has got an offset path applied to it. And finally, if we come down underneath characters, you'll see the opacity default. If we select that and double click to turn on the knockout group, we now create a transparent text with a black offset path. And as you can see, if I go in with the type tool and click, I can change this text to anything I want. So let's switch it back to David. Select it with selection tool. And then in the appearance panel, under that second fill that we added the offset path to, we're now going to add a second effect. So come to FX, distort and transform and transform. So make sure your preview is checked on and in the transform effect panel, set your horizontal scale to 99% and set your move vertical to one pixel. And from there, if we come to the copies, we can now increase the number of copies we want to create an extruding text effect. So bring this up as you can see, as much as you like. So I'm gonna go with say 50. You don't want too many copies in this. You don't want this extrude to be too long. But again, this remains fully editable in the appearance panel, so you can always come back and change this later. So let's go with 50, press okay, and there we go. I've got my second effect now applied to this fill. So keep the text selected with the selection tool, and now let's apply our arc effect. So come to object, envelope distort, and make with warp. This will now apply a warp filter to the text and the style we want is arch. So keep your arch horizontal and maybe just bring the bend down to, I don't know, let's say 20%. Remember, check your preview on. And we can also vertically distort. So let's bring this up to say, let's say around 8%, something like that. Again, it's gonna depend on the font you use and the length of the word you're using, but have your preview on, feel free to eyeball it. And once you're happy with the effect, then press okay. So once I've created my 3D emblem, I can essentially use this as my base or control, and then I can duplicate it as many times as I like and make as many emblems as I like. So if I command the control minus just to zoom out, so I'm gonna click and drag with the selection tool over to the left-hand side, and I'm gonna leave this off the canvas so that I can reference it anytime I like. And then if I, with it selected, if I hold Alt or Option and click and drag out a duplicate, I can now use this to make a new emblem and I can always come back to my original emblem and continue to create duplicates and make as many as I like. So if I just horizontally and vertically center align this, I can then go in and make changes. So if I select it with selection tool, again, make sure my appearance panel is open, window appearance if you can't find it. Now to go in and change the text, you're going to need to double click to go inside the envelope group Hover over and select the text, and then in the appearance panel, you'll see envelope and contents. Now, if I double click contents, I go back in to the type layer, and you can see here now, I've got my original two fills, I've got my offset path, 
I've got my transform layer and my knockout opacity layer there as well. So from here now I can make as many changes as I like. So if I come in with the type tool and I click and let's create a different name. So let's just say go with Samantha. Happy with that. Select it with selection tool. And don't worry about the squashed effect. I'll show you how to fix that now. But with this selected now, again, if I double click and go into contents, I can change the offset path, the transform, the color, and so on and so forth. Now to change the squashed effect, all I have to do, if you see I'm inside the envelope layer here, so let's check the arrow once and then twice to come out of envelope and layer. Selection tool, let's select this text emblem. And then in the envelope panel at the top, if I click the warp, you can see now I've got arch and I've got my bend and horizontal and vertical distribution. If I just select the bend, say, and just click up once and then back to 20%, that then seems to reset the warp. I don't know why it does this, it's a little bit of a glitch, but that's all you have to do come out of the envelope, select it, envelope warp options, and just set the bend percent up once and then back down. And that seems to reset it entirely. So from there then, you can go ahead and make as many changes as you like. So play around with the envelope warp, you can change the arch bend, the horizontal and vertical distribution as well. So play around with these options until you're happy. And also remember, if we double click to go back in, and then in the appearance panel, if we double click to go into contents, from there, then I can go back to my knockout fill and my offset path and transform. So for example, if I select offset path, make sure my preview's on, and you can see now if I press the offset up and down, I can make changes, press okay. And I can do the same with the transform then as well. I can increase or decrease the number of copies, press okay. All this remains fully editable. And then I can come back out of the envelope and layer one using the arrow here, once I'm ready, and I've created a second 3D emblem. So essentially now you can repeat this as many times as you like by simply grabbing your original, holding out our option to click in out a duplicate, and then using the envelope warp options at the top here and double clicking to go in and using the contents in the appearance panel to change all those other options. So go ahead and make as many of these 3D text emblems as you like. I'm going to create a few more and then I'll come back and show you how to expand and export them. And once you finish, you should have something that looks like this. Now the next section depends on intent. So if you're going to export these for web, you can kind of work with what you've got here. But if these are going to be exported for print, they are going to need to be rasterized and flattened because the knockout group effect, which we're using to create this transparent text effect, isn't going to translate into a print environment. So if we want to export these as SVGs for print, you can either go ahead and file, save a copy document, or depending on how many emblems you have, if you only have a handful, you can simply use selection tool, select over the ones you want to export, and just hold out our option and click and drag out some duplicate ones that you can put on the side here. So these will remain your editable ones, and then these are the ones that we will rasterize and flatten accordingly. So either make duplicates or create a new document, up to you. And from there, with each text emblem, start with the selection tool. So select object, rasterize, high resolution, because this is for print, and make sure the background is set to transparent, not white. You can also set your anti-alias in to type optimized, because obviously this is just type. And from there, click OK. With it selected, go to Window, Image Trace, select the rasterized text. The Image Trace panel will now activate and set the mode to black and white. And you can bring up the threshold if you like to a little bit higher. Again, this isn't a massively complicated shape, so the Image Trace should work well with the default settings. But make sure you set Ignore Color to white. That way, we'll just trace the black. And from there, check on the preview and click OK and trace. And finally, once it's been traced, with it selected, come to Object, Expand, Object and Fill, press OK. And now if we check off Image Trace, you can see now if I click and drag here, we have got a text emblem with the letters cut out of the stroked effect ready to be exported as an SVG. So now go ahead and repeat this process for all the other text emblems. And finally, once your text emblems have been expanded, it's time to export. So it's worth bearing in mind if you select this, you can change the fill color of these. 
to anything you like, but I'm going to keep them black because we're going to export as SVG for print on demand. So from there, come to Window Asset Export. You can find this in the right hand column as well. And simply click each text emblem and click the Add Asset icon here to add it to the Asset Export panel. So let's do the same with Samantha, Diego, and David. Now you'll see the Asset Export panel will assign assets the name asset and a default number if you don't go via layers. So for good housekeeping, I'm just going to change the names of these assets by double clicking and just typing in the text that the emblem has in it. Again, you don't have to do this, but I think it's a lot easier to look at jonathan.svg, samantha.svg, than asset one, asset two, and so on and so forth. So once you've added all assets to the asset export panel, check the export for screens icon down here. So let's select all assets in the export for screens. Export to, let's set a save location. I'm gonna select DWD images and press choose. Let's check on create subfolders and format. And under format, make sure you've got SVG set. And if you come to this little icon here, you can set your default SVG options. Now, I'm not going to go into details here. I actually have another video on this, exporting SVG for Illustrator. So if you wanna learn more about this, you can watch that video. But for now, let's just set style to presentation attributes. Make sure we've got convert to outlines. Leave everything else as it is and press save settings. You can add a suffix or prefix if you like, but I'm not going to do that. I've already labeled my individual assets. And from there, simply click Export Asset to export all SVGs to a folder. And finally, let's check the export. So I've come to Finder. Here's my Images folder. So there's my SVG folder. And you can see now I've got my individual SVGs ready to be used for print on demand in any way I see fit. And anytime I want to come back, then if I come back into Illustrator, I've got my expanded text emblems here, and I've got my original emblems here that are fully editable using the envelope distort options and also the appearance panel. And there you have it, super simple 3D text emblems for print on demand and plenty of other uses. I really hope you found that tutorial helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, keep on designing, and I'll see you for the next tutorial.